Defense envoy Tim Linderking says Iran is still supplying arms and drugs to Houthis despite agreement with Saudi Arabia. Hundreds of war injuries call on the government to provide medical assistance. In the absence of government role, community initiatives have taken lead to restore Alobar International Road. Welcome to Yemen Today TV, this is Danish News for me, Shazab Delvey. According to U.S. Special Envoy Tim Linder King, the current talks between Saudi Arabia and Iran hasn't stopped Tehran from delivering arms to Yemen's Houthi rebels. This report has more details. The current reconciliation between Saudi Arabia and Iran hasn't stopped Iran from delivering weaponry to Yemen's Houthi rebels, according to U.S. Special Envoy for Yemen, Tim Lunder King. Iran and Riyadh, which support opposite factions in Yemen's civil conflict, agreed in March to re-establish diplomatic ties and reopen the respective embassies, which had been closed since 2016. Lunder King told reporters that the U.S. appreciates that China brokered a Kurd, but is worried about Iran's participation in Yemen's civil conflict. They have armed and trained and equipped the Houthis to fight and attack Saudi Arabia, Lunder King said. These attacks have not taken place for over a year, but the Iranians have continued to smuggle weaponry and narcotics toward the conflict. The U.S. has long accused Iran of sending weaponry to the Houthi rebels in Yemen, where a civil conflict has displaced hundreds of thousands of people and brought the Arab world's poorest country to the verge of starvation. In recent months, U.S. and ally naval forces have seized a number of armament shipments along maritime routes they claim are being used to smuggle weapons from Iran to Yemen in violation of a 2015 UN arms embargo. Iran denies supplying and training the Houthi rebels that seized Yemen's capital Sana'a in 2014 and drove out the government. In 2015, a military coalition led by Saudi Arabia engaged in what became a bloody proxy war between Tehran and Riyadh. Since a six-month truce expired in October 2022, the US and the UN have pushed for a more comprehensive peace accord among Yemen's warring parties, in a sign of progress, a Saudi delegation led by the kingdom's envoy to Yemen, Mohammed al-Jabir, met with the Houthis in Sana'a last month. The release of over 900 detainees held by the Houthis and the internationally recognized government facilitated by the UN added to the optimism. The British ambassador to Yemen confirmed that the chance to achieve peace and end the war is more positive than ever if real talks are made. He said that we have the best chance for peace in Yemen since the start of the current conflict. However, the power decided on peace rests with Yemeni leaders and achieving peace will require them to make concerns for the greater good. The U.S. Navy announced the seizure of a shipment of drugs smuggled from Iran in the second operation of its kind in 48 hours. It said in a statement that the shipment estimated 80 million worth of heroin, which was taken from a fishing vessel passing through the Gulf of Oman on the 10th of May in the second drug seizure of ship this week. They explained the discovery of more than 1,000 kilograms of heroin on board a ship crossing international waters. Many experts of war need complex operations and expensive medications to heal the injuries they suffered in the battle. However, prices continue to increase in light of the deteriorating economy and salaries continue to go unpaid. This report has more details. Years of suffering endured by the wounded of the government forces inside the Al Nasr residence here in Ma'rib without any relief that might alleviate even a fraction of their grief. Many veterans of war need complex surgeries and expensive medications to heal the wounds they suffered in battle. However, prices continue to mount in light of the deteriorating economy and salaries continue to go unpaid. I need spinal reconstruction and pelvic calcification surgeries. If my condition goes untreated for longer, it will only get worse. I can't afford the surgeries. I receive no salary. Asil al Hamadi lost the ability to move or speak due to a severe head injury he sustained from a Houthi sniper during battle. His wheelchair is now an extension of his body. As a veteran of war who labored in the pursuit to restore his homeland, he demands that concerned authorities secure his right to treatment. Injured in light of duty, 
he no longer has the ability to work for a living. The circumstances battle survivors face isn't any different from this year from the previous years. Until now, there haven't been budget implementations to send soldiers for treatment abroad. The currency exchange rate is still unstable, so there is little we can do to amend the situation. The suffering of these soldiers endures. Widespread delays and failures in the payment of soldiers have long been an issue in Yemen, especially as medication and surgery grow more unaffordable to the populace. The protracted armed conflict in Yemen has been raging for eight years, following a decade of localized armed conflicts that have generated a massive humanitarian and protection crisis across the country. Houthi gunmen killed the tribal sheikh in the neighborhood south of Sana'a, which is under the control of the ram-backed Houthi militia. Local sources said a Houthi gunman shot Sheikh Hussein Ali Hatim, one of the sheikhs of the Sahan district, after he left a mosque on his way to his house near the neighborhood where he lives. The sources pointed out that the Sheikh Hussein was killed on spot while the gunmen fled to an unknown destination. The government forces stopped an importation attempt by the terrorist Houthi militia towards sites on many fronts in Taz. They added that the forces targeted a gathering of Houthi militia members and prevented them from carrying out hostilities against them southeast of Taz. The Passports Account and Coordination Committee of the Emergency Committee handed over to the Yemeni embassy detailed lists of all Yemenis stuck in Port Sudan. A member of Yemeni Emergency Committee said they handed over to the embassy the final list of more than 1,000 stuck Yemenis in Port Sudan. They stressed that there is no timetable specifying the dates for the exit of the stuck or plans for that, which means the continued suffering of the Yemenis in Port Sudan. On the international crossing line that connects the governorates to each other and Yemen to neighboring countries, people complain about the danger of the line, which has become full of cracks, amid youth initiatives seeking to fill them online in an attempt to ease the suffering of people. This report has more details. In Yemen, the years of war have missed construction and development projects and eliminated the existing ones. While the vital projects in the country remained without maintenance or care, such as the road that linked the governorates with each other and Yemen as a whole with other neighboring countries. The international crossing road, which is now full of holes and cracks, and did not witness any maintenance or modernization until today, which prompted citizens to launch community initiatives from time to time in order to fill these holes in an attempt to mitigate the risks and accidents facing travelers on the international Line. This is a charity initiative from some beneficiaries who provided us with the required materials and tools needed to fill the holes on this main road of Ma'rib. Many citizens died on this road. They were victims of the authorities' negligence. Young citizens participated in the initiative and thanks to them, we were able to finish the first phase of this project. We shall continue working on this road, but we are asking the authorities to provide some support or show any interest interest in this matter. There are many societal initiatives that seek to fill the potholes on the international crossing line. Despite the efforts, they remain limited compared to the extent of the damage caused to the crossing line as a result of neglect in the long distance. What necessitates the movement of the concerned authorities to play their role in expanding and maintaining the international road that connects the governorate of Ma'rib with Saudi Arabia and other governorates? We're asking the concerned authorities to pay some attention to this issue and specify a suitable budget in order to amend this road. This line became very dangerous. It leads to death. The International Transit Road is the most important of the main roads that are still open to the movement of expatriates between the governorates. At a time when dozens of vital roads were closed due to the war, and yet it did not receive the attention of the concerned authorities. Coming next in the news. World Health Organization says monkeypox epidemic is no longer a global emergency.
Welcome back. The World Health Organization said that the global outbreak of monkeypox, which baffled experts, when the smallpox-related diseases spread to more than 100 countries, last year is no longer an international emergency. This report has more details. The World Health Organization declared the monkeypox outbreak is no longer a global health emergency, unlike it was since July 2022. It was an extraordinary event that constitutes a global public health risk through the international spread of disease and to potentially require a coordinated international response. A public health emergency of international concern fake creates an agreement between countries to abide by WHO's recommendations for managing the emergency. Each country in turn declares its own public health emergency that carry legal weight. Countries use them to organize resources and abandon the rules in order to ease a crisis. After a heated meeting this week, WHO's Emergency Committee for MBOX recommended an end to the emergency. It met and recommended that the multi-country outbreak of MBOX no longer represents a public health emergency of international concern. Inbox continues to pose significant public health challenges that need a repost, proactive and sustainable response. Countries are urged to maintain their testing capacity and ability to respond to future outbreaks quickly. Globally, cases have been declining for months, especially as awareness has increased and the vaccine became more widely available. There were 90% fewer cases reported over the last three months compared to the previous 90 days. There is understandable uncertainty about the probability of a large return versions of infection. There are also gaps in knowledge about modes of transmission in some countries, as well as the effectiveness of vaccines and continued lack of effective countermeasures, particularly in African countries where transmission and inbox cases occur regularly. As a result, WHO's expert committee determined that the challenges were best solved through a long-term approach rather than through emergency measures. Inbox is a less severe cousin of the now eradicated smallpox virus. It's in to parts of West and Central Africa and has typically been contracted from a rodent or small mammal. After a dramatic drop in cases in recent months, monkeypox is no longer designated as an extraordinary situation that qualified as a global crisis. We now notice a steady progress in controlling the outbreak based on the lessons of HIV and working closely with the most affected communities. Dozens of employees of two private companies protested in Sana'a to denounce the continued closure of two companies by the Iran-backed Houthi militia four months ago. The protesters raised banners calling for the Houthis to withdraw from two companies, reopened them and released their manager Adnan al-Harazi, who was kidnapped four months ago in a Houthi militia prison. The Central Bank of Yemen warned all institutions against identifying themselves and submitting to the destructive orders of the Houthi militia to the financial sector. The board of directors expected destructive and illegal measures that the militia is taking against the financial and banking sector under different names. The bank affirmed that the laws regulating the work of financial and banking institutions are the laws of Yemen.
Houthis continue to spend millions of riyas under the pretext of reviving religious occasions. This report has more details. Informant sources in Sana'a said that the Houthi militia has spent the equivalent of $1 million to celebrate sectarian events since the beginning of this year. The sources pointed out that the majority of cities and villages under the control of the group witnessed the organization of dozens of activities on the occasion of the so-called International Jerusalem Day and the anniversary of the killing of Caliph Ali ibn Abi Talib. While the majority of the population in the areas under its control suffers from famine and extreme poverty as a result of the coup and the war that was ignited by the militia. Sources added that leaders in the group held a series of separate meetings with Houthi leaders, during which they called on their supervisors and those in charge of managing the ministry's government agencies and institutions kidnapped in Sana'a and the rest of the regions to organize various activities in exchange for millions of riyals, while forcing the population to provide support and participation. Sources close to the group's ruling circle in Sana'a spoke of Houthi holding more than 370 activities, meetings, political events, evenings and mobilization courses in all cities under its control, for which the group wasted more than 630 million Yemeni riyals. The sources confirmed that Sana'a govern rate topped the list of the govern rates under the group's control with regard to holding events and evenings to celebrate the occasions, followed by the capital Sana'a, and then came in order the govern rates of Sada and Raima. They indicated that only those loyal to the group benefited from these amounts allocated for holding events, excluding other Yemenis, who have been facing for nine years the danger of famine and the spread of deadly epidemics, while depriving them of their salaries and the most basic necessities of life. Here's a reminder of the main headlines. U.S. envoy Tim Linder King says Iran is still supplying arms and drugs to Houthis, despite agreement with Saudi Arabia. Hundreds of war injuries call on the government to provide medical assistance. In the absence of government role, community initiatives have taken lead to restore Alobar International Road. This is the end of the news. Thank you for watching.